Yo, what a weird hurricane season we had this year. There were some bangers out in the Atlantic. Luckily, none of that stuff seemed to hit us as hard as it could have. And it really didn't make its way over here to where our boat is. But it's been a stormy season nonetheless. Jesus Christ, it's gonna get pretty weird pretty quick, huh? Rainy time. Every time somebody comes new in the anchorage, they drag a little bit. Imagine you go to shore and you know, um, your million dollar catamaran. Yes. This shit came out of nowhere. Imagine you had gone to Cancun for the day to get some shit. Yeah. Well, maybe not lose your boat, but it's. No, I, I, that actually was going where I got straight into the, the, the luxury marina with all the mega yachts there. Yeah. We reached the point where we lose visibility. This will show more accurately uh, how fast we're moving, if we're moving at all. Tony arrived at Isla and we consulted with him about his old Aries wind vane. He also gave us use of his dinghy and engine, although they both needed some work. We've been given the opportunity to try to fix four horsepower outboard and borrow an inflatable dinghy. So now I'm learning how to use some 3D modeling software to design a hard shell sailable dinghy, which is what Robbie and I dream about having for our travels again someday. Our neighbors dropped off some tools for us to inspect the outboard that was refusing to start. Okay, we get, very importantly we have ice cream and we've got, these are spark plug sockets. These set. are spark plug socket sets. Oh, a lot easier if you have the right tool. Just like normal? Yeah, just a little bit, yeah. Get your snoot out. Is this good enough? Pull? It's not always firing. Perhaps the surface of the spark plug just needed to be cleaned for a better spark. You sanded. Just the, 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 the nipple and the, the thing. I want to see how much it sparks. Yeah. Pull? 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 Just a. Uh, Cover, uh, yeah, it take cover. Okay, the air goes in there. Robbie wanted to check perhaps if there was an obstruction somewhere along the fuel line. Cut, cut the, the zip tie. Okay, so that's the carburetor. Yes. Just looking for cleanliness, signs of water, debris. All these kinds of things. You just opened up everything you could really open up on the carburetor. Yeah, as much as I dare, I just cleaned it. The good thing about having the GoPro out is that it's good to film what you're taking apart if you've never taken apart the piece before. It can kind of help you to remember how to put things back together. It, uh, it's under the fuel pump. Something's wrong with the spark plug. It's not producing enough. It's not hot enough. I bought a new spark plug, but we could not get the outboard working. Again. Again. No, it's like barely producing a spark. So no outboard for us. Onward to finishing the wind vane. We received our shipment of 50 feet of Dyneema, which is a very non-stretchy line. So we have two little pieces of stainless steel chain from Tony that are perfect for being attachment point on the tiller. And we're very hesitant about 
drilling a hole in our tiller, obviously, for the construction and the sculpture of our tiller. We got some oils, some silicone, WD-40. We're always in a stage of decredding. While the Dyneema is great for controlling the wind vane, chain is a good material for the attachment point because it will allow us to make adjustments while underway. Lastly, we just had to splice some eyes on the end and lash to the chain. I think we, want, we are ready to, te to go test the wind vane. Early the next morning, before I had even really woken up properly, we decided to start sailing to see how the wind vane would perform. Up came the anchor and out rolled the mainsail. We just needed to get out into the open where there'd be less obstacles and more wind. I'm trying to get Ravi to help me understand how to use the wind vane. My understanding is that we're trying to get the tiller as centered as possible. The bottom of the wind vane blade uh, as centered as possible. The blade at the top is to the wind. Click the part only adjusts the direction. It's, it's used to actually give direction. If I want to go 10 degrees more one side, I click one side. Or if I want to go 10 degrees more the other side, I click the other. Our first adjustments included lengthening the control lines so that we could reach them from further in the cockpit and adjusting the tension of the overall lines. We can kind of leave the tiller for a couple of minutes and the bow will not turn into the wind. And if it really does, it, it actually does pull enough to stop. But then it'll go way up wind and then way down. It starts to... It's wandering. It starts to wander a little bit. I'm bonding with the, with the wind vane and the tiller. No, I don't think the sails are totally balanced. I think... In what way? I think the jib is a little... It's, uh, it's little. So the main is still overpowering, but then if I release the main too much, it, it's just not right. I think we need a little bit more jib. As the wind picked up though, it wandered a little bit less. I don't know whether to try and make, and make the tiller more... It seems like the straighter I try to keep the tiller, the harder it is. Sorry. Yes, I mean, if you are using the tiller by hand, you feel that you're one, you're to more to one side than the other, right? Yes, but that can be that technically should be regulated by the, the sails. Easing out or tightening the main determines whether the tiller is positioned more to the center or more to one side. While the trim of the sails can be adjusted to the point where the tiller is almost centered, we still had to adjust the course clicker because our boat tends to go more into the wind. Like I can see it react, responding better from just this, like an hour ago. You got the syringe out. And just a little oil. Just lubricating everything. I think love, it's oil. Oil, yum, 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 Responsive. All we have to do is remember to keep on looking forward so that we don't hit anybody. With the wind vane more or less doing its thing, Robbie finally had time to break out the fishing gear. I have more time to pet my doggy. The concept that we could not hold on to the tiller for like we don't have to hold on. one minute, that we don't have to hold on to it for one minute is just like witchcraft to me. It's very, very weird. I, I'm, I'm not touching the tiller. Ravi is not touching the tiller. 
He's able to put out his fishing gear, his fishing lines. For the first time, I don't have to have my hands on the tiller at all times. Just having to make small adjustments uh, as the wind kind of goes up and down. It's, it's a little bit like gusts and then very calm. But considering how calm it is, the wind vane is actually holding a course within like 15-20 degrees. This kind of changes our sailing lives as we know it. You can actually go down into the boat and cook something. I can walk around on the deck. I can make sure the dog is not going somewhere unsafe. Potentially fly the drone. It's having a third competent crew member. Yes, but it is automation of sorts. Automaton. It's, it's so, AI. It's the, no, it's not AI, it's the opposite. It's artificial and it's intelligent in its own way and it's taking my job. Oh, ah, God. fish! Are you gonna put it in the cockpit or are you gonna put it on the side like we talked about? Land coming. Oh, never mind. No lunch. Sorry. Sorry we tried to put, put it up the side and then that made it bad. With the extra competent crew member on board, I had time and energy to patch up the inflatable dinghy. One old patch had come off, and I decided to reinforce all the other patches and rough spots with some leftover 5200 sealant. We might have to take a drastic step, maybe like take a tack inside, get back from the shadow then. Mm, Choco. Yeah. Is that comfortable? So the only maintenance that we really had to do of the sails today was to, so far, was to go inwards towards land a little. We were going out into the middle, the very current-filled strait, which kind of makes things more bumpy, and we lose a lot of speed going against a, a knot and a half of, of current. We see it, the difference on our chart plotter immediately as we came in towards shore a little bit. The trade-off, of course, is that we are closer to shore. There's not, like, anchorages along the way that much, and we're just, you know, we want to give it a respectable distance. We can sail along the, what, 30-meter mark. It's good for fishing around the drop-off. It's dramatic, actually, how much it drops off between 200 meters and, uh, like, 40 meters. It's a vertical line. I didn't film it, but on the trip water you see a vertical line if you're looking at the depth sounder. It's also where we see the most dramatic shift in, in current. We sailed most of the day, you know, four or five knots, very easy going, and then now we're, we're fighting it. The breeze is beautiful, but we're only going 2.5 maybe three knots. You, know, you keep on saying more wind and I'm just like shh. It's nice and comfortable. I remember the first time we sailed. <laughs> I remember the first time we sailed this passage from Isla Mujeres to Puerto Aventuras. We were stuck here for 50 hours. It took us 50 hours. This stuff stays sticky. Are you going for a pee pee choco? Lost all the fish today. 
three in a row. Opa. Still daylight left, Ravi. Still daylight left, yeah. There's still fish in the water. Mm. Right. I don't know. I think there's less fish in the channel. We'll see. As we neared the center of the channel, the waves seemed to pick up slightly with this opposing northerly wind. We're battling. We should be realistically doing at least five knots. We're struggling to do three knots. Seven knots right now. Yeah, and in other circumstances, we'd be doing seven, six, seven knots. We've seen our boat do six, seven knots in these conditions, but we are doing half of that. There was a chance of arriving at Cozumel before nightfall. We didn't really think we would. But we'll make it there in the dark for sure. We we have anchored there on somebody else's boat, so hopefully nothing has changed in that anchorage. There's an artificial reef, some weird blocks underwater we have to watch for. But it's going to be a night, a night anchoring. There was no other way. Well, there was a way. We could have left at like 3 a.m. this morning. <laughs> but instead we're well rested. At least we're well rested coming in in the dark. <laughs> With the waves and the current, I sometimes found myself having to give the tiller a slight nudge in one direction or the other. He's, that is the look of one fed dog stuffed like a sausage. He porked down his food. He was so happy to get it. Chicken and rice. Here we have Cozumel downtown. It looks so close. We made it to Cozumel. But as we approached our destination, time seemed to slow down. Like, it seemed to take forever to travel the last three miles towards the island before we could turn south, making our way along the waterfront. going to have to come quite close to the shoreline here to get any of the protection of the island because it feels like we're just a couple of meters off the island right now that's how everything looks at the moment and we're still in quite a bit of wave hey but of course we're right at the very top yeah, northernmost and as we get in behind the brakes of the cruise liner docks. Those should offer some protection as well from this kind of northerly originating wave. The current was strong here, like a river flowing against us at two knots. Still have to find a way to... We still have to find some clamps for the kitchen, for the stove, because I have to stand here and manually make sure that everything stays on the stovetop. From all of us aboard in Esperado, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for next video to see what Cozumel has in store for us.